Good morning, first graders. I hope you're having a great day. I am so excited for reading today. So, like Mr. Ridges said earlier, today is Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. Today, we are going to be doing day 16. It's the top one on this little band. And we're going to be doing reading. And after reading, you will go into word work. Okay? Awesome. Today our learning target is I can describe the characters and setting from the story Tom and the Egg. So we're going to be reading Tom and the Egg today and then working on the activity for day 16. I am so excited. Let's get started by reading the story Tom and the Egg. You can follow along with me or I want to challenge you to try to read the story by yourself. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first graders, we have Tom and the Egg. It is on page 16. Turn to page 16 now. Let's get started reading it. If you want, you can try to read it by yourself first. Tom and the Egg from Reading A to Z. Written by Joe Slade and illustrated by Philip Newsom. On a foggy October morning, Tom was jogging on a long path in Farmer Olive's orchard. He was jogging with his dog, Bobby. Suddenly, Bobby stopped jogging. Tom did not want to stop. What is the matter, Bobby? Are you hot? asked Tom. That did not seem to be the problem. Tom jogged back to get Bobby. The dog was on top of a log, sniffing at something in a pile of moss under an olive tree. What did you find, Bobby? said Tom. When Tom saw what Bobby had found, he was shocked. It was the biggest egg he had ever seen. It was twice as big as a soccer ball. It's a dinosaur egg, whispered Tom. I didn't whisper, let me go back and whisper that. It's a dinosaur egg, whispered Tom. I must save it, there is no mom. Tom found a big box that was used to pack oranges. He filled the box with moss and carefully placed the egg on top of the moss. When he got home, Tom put the orange box with the egg inside in his dad's office. Dad's gone to see his boss in Oregon for a few days. The egg will be safe, locked in dad's office, thought Tom. He put a lot of his dad's socks on top of the egg to keep it warm. The next day, he told his friend Polly about the egg. I have a dinosaur egg in my dad's office. And when it hatches, I'll be the only kid in the world with a pet dino, bragged Tom. It will be a very hard job to raise a dinosaur baby, said Polly. If it's a carnivore, you'll have to feed it a lot of meat. Where will you get the meat? They don't sell dino meat in the pet store. If it's an herbivore, You'll have to feed it a lot of vegetables. You'll need pots and pots of veggies, said Polly, and the dino will not be housebroken. So you'll have to mop up lots and lots of plops, she added. Tom looked worried. He hadn't thought of how difficult a job it was to look after a dinosaur. When Tom got home, he said, hi, to his mom and ran straight to his dad's office. He opened the box and pulled off his dad's socks. He saw cracks on the egg. Oh no, the dinosaur is about to hatch, he said. The egg was cracking and creaking and finally a little head popped out. Then a little creature hopped out of the egg and onto the top 
of Tom's head. It wasn't a dinosaur after all. It was a baby ostrich. Tom ran to show his mom. Tom told his mom how he and Bobby had found the egg in the orchard. Tom's mom laughed and told him how an ostrich that had escaped from the zoo had been caught in Oliver's orchard and taken back. But nobody knew she had laid an egg while she was away. The next day, Tom and his mom took the baby ostrich to the zoo. The mother ostrich was happy to see her baby. The zookeeper said that if Tom had not kept the egg warm, it would never have hatched. He was very happy and he allowed Tom to pick a name for the baby. Tom thought for a moment and said, I'd like to name her Olive because I found the egg under an olive tree. So it shall be, said the zookeeper, Olive the ostrich. Wow, what a good story, boys and girls. First grade, excellent job following along to the story. Or if you tried to read it yourself, give yourself a big pat on the back. Give me a thumbs up if you guys like that story. It was a the Tom and the Egg was a really good story. Miss Pierce, when I was in first grade, I actually found an egg and I hid it from my mom and it ended up getting cracked and it smelled really bad and she was very mad. So don't hide eggs if you think that they're dinosaurs or if you think you're gonna have a pet chicken, okay? Yeah, don't do that. My mom was not happy with me. Now that we read Tom and the Egg and I told you the fun little fact about Miss Spears, I have a few questions for you guys, okay? So, get your brain ready. Okay, my first question. Who are the characters and what is the setting of this story? So today, I'm gonna give you five seconds to think about it. Okay, so I'm gonna read it one more time. Because we're smart first graders, we're gonna bring our think time down a little bit. Who are the characters and what is the setting of this story, Tom and the Egg? Go, think about it. Excellent job thinking about that question, first graders. Now, quickly tell someone you're working with or whisper into your hand who are the characters of the story and what is the setting. If you need to, pause this video. Go. Excellent. Pause it. We're going to keep moving. My next question is what does it mean to compare two things? What does it mean to compare two things? Quickly, five seconds, think about it. Excellent job, first graders, thinking about it. What did you think that it meant to compare two things? Good job thinking. I love that answer. So, Miss Pierce said, when we compare, we think about how they are similar or the same. So when we compare, we think about how they are similar or the same. Let's move on to the last question. Are the characters and setting similar to the characters and setting in Mongo's migration? So are the characters and setting in Tom and the Egg similar to the characters and setting in Mongo's migration? Hmm, five seconds, think about it. job using that think time and really stretching your brain. Now, I want you to talk about it. So talk with someone who's working with you or whisper into your hand. Are the characters and setting in Tom and the Egg similar to the characters and setting in Mongo's Migration? Talk about it. Pause it if you need to, all right? Now, we are gonna go to our packet. 
and we're gonna find day 16. It is on page 17, and we're gonna start working on it. Get your packet, pause it if you need to get your packet, or if you're still talking about that last question. Let's get started working. All right, let's get started. We are only doing page 16 today. I'm gonna read it to you now. Follow along. Tom and the egg. Use evidence from the text to support your thinking. What does that mean to use evidence? Good job. It means you're gonna go back to the text and find your answers to help you. Who are some of the characters in this story? Who is the main character? Who are some of the characters in the story? Who is the main character? So I could say the characters in the story are, and then put your answer. I could also say the main character is, and then put who the main character is. Make sure you answer both of those questions here. Now, my question here is what is the setting of the story? What is the setting of the story? I could say the setting of the story is, and then put my answer to what the setting of the story is, all right? Then you guys are gonna draw the characters and the setting. Miss Pierce didn't make it even, I'm not perfect. So try to make it a little bit more even. So you could draw the characters here and the setting here. Excellent job, first grade. You're gonna turn this page into your dojo portfolio. I will see you tomorrow to start day 17. Great job.